Hey guys, James Blackwell here again. Um, today I would like to talk about how I think about you know playing high and working on my range. Uh, I'm going to make two separate videos. This first video is going to talk about breathing techniques and what some people refer it to as the high compression breath or also uh, what's commonly referred to as the wedge breath, although I don't follow the exact outline steps of the wedge breath. I think it's probably pretty much the same thing that I do. Uh, how I figured out how to do it and how you can think about it in practice and play really high, which should help me get more YouTube hits. Hey. Okay, so the high compression breath is basically one where you're, you're taking in air and then you're using the muscles of your torso to really compress the air stream. Um, this can be a little bit confusing because people always like to think about the differences between breathing high or low or where the air should go. Um, so the way that I uh, think about this myself so I don't have to really think about like where the actual air is going is I use the same technique that I talked about in the first video, I think, and that is to simply imagine the sound out in front of the bell with a nice open ah quality and, and then breathe in that sound. Well, so I'm just breathing in while focusing on that sound. Um, and what that's going to do primarily uh, from a phys physical standpoint is it's going to keep all of this open, right? So even when we're talking about high compression breathing, we still don't want any compression in the chest, neck, um, you know, the throat, the tongue, things like that. Because th those are all things that are going to inhibit sound production. So what we want to do is actually move that compression a little bit lower in the body where it's not going to make our sound any smaller. Uh, so the way that I figured out how to do this was by practicing the Schlossberg lip slurs, I think it's number 31, as a part of a daily routine. I was practicing the Bill Adam routine at the time while studying with Charlie Davis. And the lip slurs are very simple, you just go. That's basically it. You work down through all seven um, positions and you, f and you really pause on each note and make sure that you're, you're singing all oh, through the horn. Oh, 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 oh. This ran in contradiction to the way that I originally learned how to play lip slurs uh, when I was in high school or middle school, which was switching to the E sound on a higher note. Oh, e, oh. And while that is a great way to learn the, the feel or get the knack of doing the lip slurs because they are a very slight movement of your tongue, once you can do them that way, if you focus on maintaining the ah shape, you're not only going to keep your sound open as you ascend, but it's also going to change the way you feel tension in your body. So when you're, when you're focusing on saying, ah, what ends up happening, in my opinion, or, or the way that I feel it, is that you get a slightly lower tongue position. It's very slight. The changes of the tongue are, are so tiny, you probably can't even see them. Um, but they feel, they feel rather large in your mouth. So you get a a slightly lower tongue position but to create so to create the airspeed that you need for the high note your body has to come up with the compression somewhere else um, and this can this is this is why when we're on gigs and we're tired and we're trying to do things that are out of our control levels that this is where bad sorts of like tension creep in right bad like your throat tightens up and you you know you do all this stuff just to get the notes out Right? But in the practice room where you can really take your time and develop slowly, teaching your body to use different balances of the tension is actually very beneficial. And by focusing on maintaining the ah sound in the upper register, what eventually ends up happening is that you learn to take all of the tension from up here and it gradually locates itself down lower and lower and lower. Um, now, the way that I think about well, the way that I learned it was I would practice those slurs, oh, and then you just continue up the partials. Right, so when you get to where you're playing a high C with an open uh, oral cavity, more or less, what ends up happening is that this comes into play and you start to develop uh, more support. And that's what they're talking about, supporting your sound. Um, or your core support. It's all just the engagement of these muscles down here. 
Now, at first, when you have less control over the notes, you're going to feel a, a lot more compression down here. So to play high, you're really gonna feel it like down here. It's almost as if your muscles squeeze up and in like this, right? So the tension comes from below and it moves up, okay? I know that looks silly, but that's what it feels like. Um, now, when you first start, you'll have less control, right? So, so this will be having to compensate more for the lack of control in your tongue position and your embouchure and blah, 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 your airflow and all that stuff. But as you get control of the note, you're going to need this less and less and less. The, uh, the, the, the changes between one note and the, and the next are going to get so close together that it almost feels as if every note basically just you know, ha has a homogenous feel. Um, so another way that you can think about the breathing, right, is aside from playing high and imagining the sound with an open quality in front of the bell and breathing in that sound, is to actually think about, I like to think about my rib cage actually expanding horizontally outward rather than lifting up the chest or rather than pushing out the belly or sucking in the belly, I just simply think about the rib cage expanding out horizontally. And what happens is you can engage the, uh, I guess these intercostals is what they're called, but these muscles right here at the bottom of your rib cage, you can really like squeeze the hell out of the airstream when you learn to engage those. So you practice the, the lip slurs or whatever, long tones, whatever you're going to do in the upper register, and you, you hear the ah sound, and then you actually think about coming out like this. Right. So, and the um, the higher you get, like I said, the higher you get, uh, you'll have to focus on this. But a as you improve, suddenly a high C, a high E, a high G doesn't feel maybe so high anymore. And you can just actually just play it in a more relaxed manner. But when you're learning to do this, or you find yourself in a gig situation, it can be a real lifesaver to know how to engage these muscles mechanically, so to speak and not just rely on them subconsciously because as you get tired you're going to start screwing around with your form and your and your your old habits are going to start creeping in and this can be a real lifesaver like I said to learn how to engage these muscles so just practice some basic slurs and try to keep the same ah quality ah and continue to go higher and higher and higher through the partials while doing that and then every once in a while uh, maybe maybe once or twice a week, really just play as high as you can and focus solely on getting the feel of how a high compression breath works for you. That's basically it. So anyways, I'll see you next time. I'm going to do another video after this and talk about some exercises that you can use these on. All right.